Uh, good morning, folks. We're kind of trying to make up for lost time. We had a busy morning here and had a couple of difficulties getting here on time, so we missed the first part of this lady's talk as she introduced what Blue Ribbon Day is about. And so she's been gracious enough to grant us a second opportunity to talk with you about what Blue Ribbon Day is. This is Casey Perry. She's the executive director of the Child Advocacy Center here in uh, Covington County. And we've never met before, but I'm familiar with your work. And I, I know what you're doing is a great work. And if you can take a minute, Casey, or if you take 10 minutes, I don't <laughs> care. Explain to the folks here in, in, on the air, we broadcast to Covenant County all over, what y'all are doing, what the purpose of Blue Ribbon uh, Day is. It's really, a, every day ought to be a Blue Ribbon Day. That's right, that's right. Uh, and I'll just turn it over to you. Okay. Well, um, April is um, National Child Abuse Prevention Month. And so each April we um, do a Blue Ribbon Ceremony. And this day particularly is to celebrate those children um, who have survived child abuse um, and also to remember those who were not as fortunate and didn't survive. Um, but to gather the community and to just remind people um, it's not something that we think about every day um, that happens in our community. And so um, to remind our community that child abuse um, does happen and it does happen right here in Covington County. Um, and to celebrate with those that are fighting each day, our DH work, DHR workers and our law enforcement investigators, our prosecutors, so many um, every day are fighting um, for children in Covington County. And so um, this is just a day to honor those people and, and to remind the community. Well, in the end, uh, it turns out to all be about the children. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I share this I had a friend grammar school high school I never knew he was abused I'm not gonna mention his name or tell give a whole lot of clues his daddy was a deacon in the church I grew up in and uh, all I can remember is that he showed up with broken fingers hands and arms all the time and we joked about him being brittle I didn't know until I was 35 years old and he was 34 that his dad beat him about every day. Now, I know that's uh, probably an extreme example, uh, but this was a, a kid that came from a, a family of four children. Uh, his brothers and were outstanding athletes. His sister was a beautiful girl. Uh, and, and it's amazing, it's just right here with us. I played with him in a sand pile. I played with him in a band later. Right. And, and never knew it. So it's kind of time speak up about something like that. It case. is. It absolutely is time to speak up. And you would be surprised in a crowd that we had gathered here today, the number of people, even adults that were have experienced um, abuse as a child or as an adult. Um, just uh, the statistics are out of this world. Uh, it's scary. It, it is very scary. And so it is certainly time for us to, to stand up, to be a voice for these children that sometimes are too scared to, to use their voice. Well, you know, a lot of times they don't know who to go to. That's exactly right. And uh, I think, you know, that's one situation where teachers and educators are closer to these children than, than a lot of other folks. If they all do, if it, and I don't, I know we're not going to have a, a lot of children watching our show, <laughs> but if, if they can go to the teacher or even the janitor, that's the right. custodian, mm -hmm. and tell them they're working around people that are competent and really want to help them That's right. have a, a better life. Right. It's a, it's a, a terrible thing. You read a poem uh, when you're, if, would you mind, can you retrieve that and <laughs> read that poem again for us? Um, or are you just too modest? Not from memory. <laughs> or you're, are you just too modest? I couldn't remember it um, off the hand, off my mind, well, but I could read it. Um, but the gist of it was that, that one person could make a difference. And so that's what I challenged our, our audience today to be that difference, to be that one person that makes a difference in a child's life. Um, there's so many times where we can, we may not know for sure that something's happening to a child, right. but we can see that child and we're around that child and we see different behavior changes or maybe they 
Maybe their the grades change. Maybe, maybe their grades change or their clothes change or things, things mm -hmm. about them change. And it just raises our suspicion that maybe right. something's going on. And I would encourage you, if that happens, make that report. And, and we're not asking, I don't think y'all are asking for people to be the thought police. No. No, you know, <laughs> I, it, it's far different than that, but it's an important thing for uh, uh, people to be contributive to, to making that information go to the right places. That's right. After all, the only thing that involves a child's life. That's right. And, uh, and it's, you know, something I didn't hear anybody say, but I know for a fact is that abused children turn out to be child abusers later on in many cases. Yes. The only way we can correct this is to stop the cycle. That's exactly right. It is. Statistics say that once a child is abused, that there's a strong chance that they will continue to repeat that behavior um, as, as they grow up. Right. And so we want to stop that cycle. We want to um, provide these children with an opportunity for counseling and for whatever other services that they might need so that we can break that chain in their family. All right, now we've talked about a lot of things, but how would they get in touch with you? They can. That's a pretty basic yeah. thing we need to probably cover. <laughs> yes, um, they can reach us at the Child Advocacy Center. Our phone number is 222-1881, um, or they can stop by. We're on the campus of Andalusia Hospital right beside the daycare, right. Um, so they can feel free. Or they can go through DHR, law enforcement, prosecution, uh, DA's office, any of those entities can point them back to us. Now, it's, it's my understanding, Casey, that what we've got here uh, on the campus of Andalusia Health is is a little bit unusual. It's, and and y'all actually are, I guess, willing to serve as a counselor for children, not just here in Andalusia and Covenant County, but other areas as well. You have very specialized people that, that, that are trained with how to deal with children. I'm sure that it's hard for a child to be honest about abuse. Right. You have to, I'm, think to draw them out that's right and you have people on staff that are trained to work with that rather than you know like joe friday just the facts <laughs> you know yes we do we have trained counselors um in our building that are their registered play therapists and so they can meet the child where they're at age-wise mm -hmm. um but they're also specially trained in trauma-focused um therapy as well and so they can really um help children to to come out of that shell of abuse and, and to flourish. And, and I would guess this is not one of these poof and gone things. It's not a one-time visit. Y'all have a yes, long-term program, and I would I would think if the child's in physical danger, you actually have mechanisms to move the child into a place with other organizations where they're safe and protected. Uh, yes, sir. We work hand in hand with the Department of Human Resources, and, and the first thing that we want to do is ensure that that child is safe. And so, before we ever do any kind of investigation or anything, we ensure that that child is safe, and whether that's safe in their home or safe outside of the home in a different placement. Um, and then begins the investigation, um, where we have a trained forensic interviewer that that speaks with our children, and so they don't have to go to the police department and to the DHR office and to the courthouse and to all these different places that are very scary for children. Um, they come to our center. It's very child friendly center. We have fish tank. They love the fish. Um, and it's just um, a wonderful place for them to be able to come, be comfortable, and to have a trained professional be able to talk with them. Casey, where are y'all located on the Andalusia Health campus? We are right next door to the daycare Okay. Um, at the hospital. I know where that is. <laughs> you're in the same building then, yes, I guess, sir. just literally next yes, door. Yes, sir. That's well, right. I thank you so much for your time, and I thank you eternally for the work that you and uh, your people do in the community, and good luck in everything. Thank if you, you so much. If you want to come and talk about what you do, just okay. check with us at WKNI. It's probably a good thing for the community to brush up on what's available to them all the time anyway. Thank you I'll again today, and best wishes. Thank you so Thank you. much. Thank you.